So welcome to the video on reading the periodic table. In this video, we'll go through and talk about all the things you can figure out from looking at the values in one of the periodic table cells. Uh, something to mention first is that every periodic table looks a little bit different, but most of the time you have a value above the element symbol. Sometimes it will tell you the full name for the element symbol, but sometimes it will not. Uh, there's also going to be a number below the element symbol most of the time this number has decimals involved in it and the particular periodic table that we're using in class also lists some numbers in the upper right hand corner these are not necessarily things that you would see on every periodic table the, the ones over here in the corner uh, things that you will definitely see on every single one are the number above the symbol the symbol for the element itself and then the uh, number with the decimal point below the symbol so we get a little bit of extra information from the particular periodic table format that we're using in class, which is one of the reasons why I prefer that one. Uh, the first thing to talk about is the atomic number. And we'll take a look at an entire periodic table once we're finished with the main part of this video. But something to keep in mind, and we'll refer back to this one, is that the atomic number is actually the thing that the entire periodic table is organized by. So it's organized by the ascending atomic number. If uh, we're looking at our particular section of the periodic table over here for zinc, the atomic number for zinc is 30. So the number that is written above the element symbol is the atomic number. I will talk about the things that you can learn from that. This one tells you two important things. It tells you the number of protons as well as the number of electrons. So this means that zinc has both 30 protons and 30 electrons. Something that's easy to remember about all of the elements on the periodic table is that they're all balanced. What that means is they're all going to have the same number of positive protons and negative electrons. So this value tells us both of these. So zinc has both 30 protons and 30 electrons. Uh, the reason I'm <laughs> making a big deal out of this, sometimes people get confused and, and they assume that it's 30 combined. Right? So it's like 15 protons, 15 electrons. It's not the case. It's, uh, it's 30 of each in our example for zinc. Uh, the next thing to talk about is the atomic mass. I mentioned before that you always will have a number with a decimal point on it below the element symbol. That happens to be the atomic mass. So the thing that we're learning from this is that the atomic mass tells us the sum of the total number of protons and neutrons. So in this case, zinc would have a sum of 65 protons and neutrons. The thing that's tricky is there's a decimal point involved with this one. And oftentimes this confuses people a little bit because if I'm telling you it's the sum of protons and neutrons, you look at this and say, so what? So there's 0.3 protons in, uh, in zinc somewhere, or maybe 0.3 neutrons. And, uh, and that's not the case. Uh, what we have to talk about in order for this number to make sense and, and why it's a decimal is another concept called isotopes. And, and we'll talk about this as we work our way through the chapter. But um, this one is usually a decimal. When you look carefully at the periodic table, you see there are a few that are not. There's a few that are whole numbers. Uh, but it's usually a decimal point due to these things called isotopes. Um, sort of sneak peek on isotopes, they have different numbers of these guys. They have different numbers of neutrons than what we see in a normal element. Uh, so for zinc, most of the time you end up with 65 total protons and neutrons. Since the decimal number is a little bit higher, uh, you'll end up with some isotopes that have more neutrons than, uh, than the value that would give us 65. But for now, uh, what you need to know is that the sum of this one is the protons and neutrons. What we're going to do in order to use this number and to work with it is we're simply going to round it. So you would round this one down to 65 and then use that as your value. Um, another thing to mention for this one is that electrons are way too small to contribute to the mass of elements. So they are not taken into account here. Um, oftentimes people will assume, oh, it's a decimal point because of the mass of the, uh, of the electrons. And that's not the case either. They're actually so tiny that they're considered insignificant. Uh, so if we're looking at the periodic table, one of the things you have to do is use it to find certain values. So if we're using this one to find the number of protons, if remember we said the atomic mass, or the atomic number rather, uh, tells you the number of protons directly. So if you look at the atomic number up here at the top, 30, that one will tell you the number of protons. So that's as simple as just reading the value off of the periodic table. 
Now, finding the number of electrons works the same way. Remember, we said the atomic number tells you protons as well as the number of electrons. So the number of electrons for zinc is also 30. The one that gets a little bit more tricky is the number of neutrons. You can't read this one directly off the periodic table, but we did say that the atomic mass is the sum of the total number of protons and neutrons. And we know the protons. We know the protons from looking up here at the atomic number. So what we have to do to figure out the neutrons is just subtract the two numbers that we have. So we're going to round the atomic mass. Right? This one rounds to 65. And then, as I said to you before, um, this one tells us number of protons and neutrons. So if we subtract out the number of protons, it just leaves us with the number of, of neutrons left. So always round that one first and then just subtract the atomic number, and it will end up telling you the uh, number of neutrons that you have in a particular element. So in this case, the number of, uh, of neutrons in zinc. Uh, last thing to talk about here are the electron orbitals. I mentioned to you before that uh, this diagram has a little bit of extra information. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about electron orbitals in a later video when we talk about the structure of an atom. But something that you may remember from images of an atom that you've seen before is that electrons make up rings around the outside of the nucleus of the atom. Each of those rings has a certain number of electrons that it can hold. So what this one does at the top is it starts with the first ring, the one that's the closest to the nucleus. So in zinc, that first ring has two electrons in it. The second ring has eight electrons. The third ring, getting even further out from the nucleus, has 18. And then the fourth ring has two electrons. Uh, so each of those values represents the number of electrons in each of those layers of orbitals. So uh, we'll talk about that one, as I said, again, in a, in a later video, when we look at the structure of the atom. And we'll use zinc as an example uh, in that video as well. So the last thing to talk about is the structure of the entire periodic table. Now we were using zinc in the example. Uh, if you notice, you don't always see the, uh, the electrons. If you hover over one of the elements on the uh, digital uh, p-table website for this periodic table, uh, then it will give you the electron orbitals. But the main thing I want you to see in this one is how it's organized. This whole thing is organized by increasing atomic number. So we have one for hydrogen, we end up with two for helium, then we have three for lithium, four for beryllium, and, and so on. So as that number goes up, so do the number of protons in each of those elements. So as you change the number of protons, the element changes, right? So if you were to increase the number of protons in something from 14 to 15, you'd end up going from silicon to phosphorus. Um, I don't make you necessarily go through and memorize different sections of the periodic table. What I'm interested in is you being able to apply the information that you see in one of those little boxes on the periodic table. So you should be able to use all of the information that's in there. You should be able to tell me total number of protons, electrons, and neutrons, as well as tell me the difference between atomic mass and atomic number and the electron orbitals that we see in each of these elements. So thank you for taking the time to watch this video and make sure you answer the questions at the end. Thank you.